Before I get started, I'm going to be talking about the, the five C's of your business strategy, your social media business strategy. But before I get started, well, thanks. How social are you? Does anybody want to give me an indication? Social. Really social? <laughs> okay. So what if you are, let's, let's imagine if you are attending a, a, going to a cocktail party or may, even a networking event and you're a little bit late, what's the first thing that you do? I apologize for being late. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> what's the first thing you do? You walk in and you're looking at this. You assess the room, you scope it out, you see who's there, you kind of listen to what they're talking about, and you adjust how you're going to behave and sound when you enter the room. Is that correct? Yes. Then what's the next thing you do? Find who you don't know and introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> how about the fact that there's these little groups already around? So would you go up to one of the groups and kind of join them? and they're already in a conversation. So you just, just say, you might introduce yourself right then and there, your name, but then, then what's the next thing? The reason I'm doing this is, this is really what social media is all about. So you're in the part of a little group, what do you do next? Join the conversation. Listen. listen. First you listen, what are they talking about? You know, what are they interested in? Do you just barge in and say, Here's my card. I'm Dale, here's my card, you need to come to my, my group. Uh, you know. Or do you just kind of like sit back a little bit, be more subtle, and find out what they're all talking about, who they are, and what they're interested in, and then, then you start asking questions, and you start engaging them. So this is exactly what you do on social media. It really isn't any different. And if you use that as a parallel, you'll be able to answer a question. Let's, if you say, like, down the road when you're deciding, you know, should I do this on Facebook? Should I put this kind of post? Or if you use this as a test, I think you'll know the right answer. Uh, the people that just barge in and blast about their product and who they are before finding out who they're talking to or being concerned about who they're talking with, they, they get turned off. So, anyway, that's just a nice little um, segue into uh, what we use as the five C's of the social media. And so I'll just talk about each of the five and then Mike will go into more depth. Uh, but it's clarification, customer, channel, communication, and what I mean by that is uh, content, and then the coordination of it all. Clarification, the first one. Really what we're talking about is the business strategy. Do you really understand your business and do you you know who your customer is, what you're selling, how it all fits together. And or are you that person who's just like, I have no idea. You know, so but we, we really help you to clarify the business strategy. And let's see this. Oh, I guess I'll use my the computer instead of that, because I'm more used to it. Um, so you we use a framework for this, and I'm we can spend hours and hours and hours on this framework, but I just wanted to introduce it today because our other group on Friday has really gotten into it to the point where anytime they have a new idea, I get a call or an email saying, you know, how would you start this, um, this Lean Canvas? It's called the Lean Canvas, and it's just a one-page business plan that helps you get to the essence of, a, of your business. And you start off, there's a, a sequence to it where you start off with what the problem is that you're solving with your business product who you're solving it for, the target customers, how you, you know, what the solution is, have, are you describing it correctly, and if it has the, um, the features that address those problems and solves those problems, how, the unique value proposition. So each one of these, just to back up a little bit, we've spent an entire class on these. Uh, but the unique value proposition, how you're different than your competition, and so why somebody, what your unique value is, so why somebody would want to buy your, your product instead of some, your comp competitors. The unfair advantage is something that's a little new uh, to the typical way everybody looks at this, and that is what do you have that nobody else can easily buy or copy? So, for example, um, I just, just to give you an example of that, there's a new networking group in town that I'm part of. It's, uh, I'm in the, on the leadership team. It's international. So our unfair advantage really over all the, the networking groups that are out there right now in Tucson 
is that there's an international presence. It's connected internationally. Then what the channels are, which is one of our five C's, and that's the paths, SEO, um, any of your social media platforms, how you reach them. Then we even go into the key metrics, which ones are working for you, how do you know that they're working for you, what are you measuring, and by demand, if people want it, we can talk about the cost structure and the revenue. Because what I find is most people come to Smart Group for marketing, and so when I start bringing up finance, which is truly my background, it's like, you know, everybody starts looking away and down, and <laughs> so, and looking really bored. <laughs> so. Lean Canvas. And the thing is, it gives you the, the framework for it, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. But it's, it's nice because then you, if you can start filling it out, and then you can bring it in, ask us questions, and we can continue. But so the first one, well, the second one after clarification is customer. And what we really emphasize here in Online BizSmarts is customer focus. You know, not product focus, not industry focus so much, but who your customer is, everything is based on that. That's who you're talking to with your, social, with your online marketing. So that's what our primary focus is. Uh, what are their pain points? I had a few notes here, but I don't know if I even need them. Um, and what your solution is, and one of the, uh, the quote I really like here, I, I've used it several times, is Henry Ford said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So it gives you an idea of how you have to think beyond what even your customer says to you. It's important to talk to your customer and find out what they want. But for you to really understand the nuances of it, you've got to think a lot further than that. Um, then the, um, the next area of the five C's is the channels. And there are so many, as you all know, you've got your inbound and your outbound pull, push. Inbound is more of the pull and more of the social media. And push is more of the blatant advertising, more traditional advertising, or it could even be email marketing. And so what we all do is a combination of both internet and traditional. How it, whoops, back to that one. Um, however, we focus on the internet, of course, and mostly on the pull. So I don't think I don't know if you guys can see that, this from here, but um, I just thought this was an interesting graph because it shows in the blue where we are today and where we're expected to be in two years. So, why are you laughing? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I thought maybe there was something funny. Up. Oh. It's just a little oh. cold in here. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> it is a little cold. <laughs> um, but and in the pink, you see how it's changed since December of 2009. So if anybody's thinking, oh, well, sometime maybe I'll try social media or, or internet marketing or online marketing, they're crazy because look how it's growing. So of companies in the US, five, two years ago, right, no, right now, there's 56% of companies have a website. I'm really surprised it's that low. Within two years, they're predicting 66%. And the 56% is up 10% from 2009. So I, I will be posting these on our website so you can see it better. But then online advertising right now is 37% of companies use it. But uh, in two years, it will be 54%. Shared network, and that is very similar to social media presence, and the numbers are close. But all that is, is that you're on a network where you're sharing information. So Facebook would be one and LinkedIn. Uh, social media presence, 31% right now, uh, and that's just tra changing really fast. So if you get in now, you've really got an advantage over your competitors. Uh, growing to 46% within two years. SEO, that's another way, re um, way that Mike and I are really different. We really emphasize the SEO. Social media is really part of search engine optimization. Does, does everybody know what search engine optimization is? We're going to have a question. Okay. No? SEO. SEO, search engine optimization, and that's how people find you on the web, mainly through Google. So, so that you're findable. Yeah. yeah, you're findable. <laughs> um, let's see. 
the ability, I'll go skip down to the last one, the ability for customers to pay for products or services online, which uh, we do have for online Bismarts, it's 18% uh, now. That's pretty small. I, I was really surprised, but it's growing to 29%. So mainly people are, are still not using it as a storefront as much as they could. I think that's potential that is missed. The channels that we'll mainly be talking about at uh, Online Biz Smarts are, as I put up here, the SEO, social media, content, that's really big, and Mike's a real expert on content. You know, how you write your content to appeal to your customers and to engage them. Uh, public relations, email marketing, that's more of a, um, that's more of a push. <laughs> and that's extremely critical, and most groups just ignore it. So, but it's very important to build your customer base with email marketing. And you can also, we talk a little bit about the PPC pay-per-click that you can do uh, in display advertising. But then, of course, that is paid, not free. Um, I know Mike's going to go over the, uh, the different channels, so I just wanted to put them in perspective really quickly for you. Each one of these we spend a lot of time on. But YouTube, uh, the entertainment book, and this is the most viral, um, it's the second uh, largest search engine after Google. It's owned by Google. It's just um, a really easy place actually to put your business with videos. And last week we talked about YouTube, and it was, it was really fun. It can be fun. Um, Facebook, I call that the photo journal, and that's what I'm sure all of us here, is there anybody not that doesn't have a Facebook account here? <laughs> Are you kidding? The chamber has one. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you running the chamber's Facebook? Or no, Lizzie is. Okay. Well, see, the, the interaction of your, own, of your own profile account with the page is really important, so we, and we talk a lot about that in the future. Um, so the photo journal. And uh, this is more of a B2C business to consumer. So if you have a business that you know is B2C, you know you, right away that's probably where you want to be. Uh, it's 57% women right now. And um, the average age is 40.5 40, 40 years old, and it's getting older. And so some of the social media is getting younger. So you need to know this because you need to find your customers where they're hanging out, right? Twitter, the daily tattle. Twitter to me is probably the most fun because it's got real-time news. You can put anything in there like that's happening in the world, like a Virginia earthquake that happened less than a year ago. And I, I saw real-time, oh, we just had an aftershock, or this happened. Uh, so it's, it's really valuable for that, or like during the debates tonight. It'd be fun to, to watch what everybody's saying on who's winning the deba debate. Uh, it is right now, so it's good for information, research, and, re and real-time news, but right now it has more women, 59% women, and the average age is getting younger, but it's right now it's at 37.3 years old. Uh, LinkedIn is the B2B, <clears throat> so if you are selling to other businesses, you really need to be on LinkedIn. That's the most important place to be. I call it the resume book because when you look at people's profiles, you're seeing the resume. And it's, it's all about business, profession, very professional. It's um, the average user, user is the oldest out there in all the social media networks. And it's half, even men and women, but they're older and also they, are, they have higher salaries. So if you have a product that's geared more to the higher salary individual or business, that's that's useful to know. 49% are over 45 years old. Google Plus, the new kid on the block. I just love Google Plus, but I'm not the typical user of, of G Plus. Um, it's the techie because it's got the young techies, mainly male, mostly male, and early adapters, uh, mainly has tech companies, web designers, web developers, um, are you going to be adding on to this a little bit? Okay. 71% male. So of all the major wow. networks, it's the most wow. male. Wow. And in contrast, Pinterest is the most female with over 80%. Uh, the most recent numbers were 82%. And wow. it's the scrapbook. Connie's becoming our Pinterest expert. Um, 
you'll see the main businesses you'll see on there are crafts and designs and interior design, hobbies, um, fashion, jewelry. Uh, but it, if even if you don't, we used to say if you have a very uh, visual product, you have to be on Pinterest because it's all photos. But it, it, we're finding out that really anybody could be on it and the, the beauty of it is that when you put a photo up there's an underlying link that gives you search engine optimization value so if you click on it it uh, you'll see it will go to your blog or your website or wherever you've gotten it from so if somebody repins one of your pins you're spreading you're kind of spreading the wealth a little bit of your own own online design Mm -hmm. So basically, the way I've seen it done is that they'll find these just crazy, wild designed houses that you know, mm -hmm. odd shapes built into the rocks, different things like that. Or the one that was hanging over the stream yes. in Costa Rica yeah. Yeah, that, was that I had. <laughs> so that kind of thing, but then it links back to your you know real estate mm -hmm. blog or your mortgage blog. Uh, you're talking about you know the dream of a home, and that's. That might be fantasy dream, mm -hmm. but you're still connecting the dots to um, yeah. that you you offer a service, and, and you're engaging people that are going to come Absolutely. back and look at your pin board Absolutely. and see what you've listed. But you're not forcing it on. You're not out there selling, selling. Um, yeah, I started. It is a very yeah warm well and fuzzy, I would say. Yeah. Okay. So is that fair? It's supplement. I'm trying to figure this well, out. I, it's just that I've seen a few people start to use it more for, um, you know, instructional things where, mm -hmm. not video, but where they're like, they're, you know, just photos of stuff and it'll be all one board, will be sort of an instruction thing mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just kind of stuff you want to know. So I, I feel like, you know, same thing for Pinterest and for Google Plus, they're starting, I'm starting to see them move outside of their classic. Yeah. I find a lot of audience. great how-tos. Mm -hmm. I'm really into photography, yeah. and I find some of the best how-tos that I've ever found on Pinterest. So it'll be an image, it'll start the conversation, I click, I go to the blog and read it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's a great way to promote a blog. And one of the things that we found out when we did our Pinterest um, workshop a couple weeks ago is that the taller your image is, the more repins it gets. So some of the really popular pins are where there's consecutive pictures showing step by step. And one I used it as, a, as an example was um, on how to decorate a cake. And so it, you just went down and, and then I think you put one in recently, didn't you? Didn't you pin something for? Um, Enchanting mm -hmm. yeah, And that, there was a, a long series of pictures, but all in one image. So we'll, we'll be talking more about Pinterest. It's, and Pinterest is so much fun. The two last areas are going to be communication and coordination. And we'll spend lots of time on what kind of content you want to communicate, you know, who you're talking to, what they're interested in, what, how to engage them. Mike always talks about what's very shareable. Uh, so it's, um, and then how to promote that content. And it's important to remember with your content that, um, that you first decide on your content strategy and then the mechanics of it come next. So everybody comes to our, our groups and they want to know how to do everything, but they first need to know that strategy and build their content and then the mechanics of here's how I post it, here's how I share it, here's how I promote it. Uh, let's see, the last thing is the coordination. How do we put it all together? That's what we talk about every single week. Uh, there's um, the best advice I can give, there, there's so much involved, um, but the best advice is if you're just starting out, get really good at the first one that is the most appropriate for your business, and then to add in a second one. But get very comfortable um, building that content and identifying why your business is online, who you're talking to, and what you're talking about. Uh, so anyway, that's, those are the five C's of um, our social media business strategy. And if, uh, if you come every Friday, or every Thursday, Thursday. this is Thursday, <laughs> okay, every week, I shall say, <laughs> it'll start all start fitting together. So, covered a lot in just one time. And now, it's Mike's turn.